Hey everyone, in this video, I want to show you a quick overview of FastAPI, how we can set a FastAPI application up, and some of the quick advantages that we get from using this framework. Let's jump right in. Getting started, let's very briefly talk about some of the advantages of using FastAPI over other frameworks. As you see here, we have a documentation in front of us, and this documentation is actually auto-generated whenever we're creating our FastAPI application. What that means is that we don't have to worry about creating these docs, and instead we just build our application and the docs are automatically created for us. Additionally, as you'll see, it's very quick to build these APIs out from scratch in just a few minutes. Finally, these APIs have very high performance because of a variety of reasons, but one very important one specific to FastAPI is that at endpoints that accept information, we can set the types of those fields that we're expecting to receive. That may not seem like a big deal, but in practice, whenever we're creating an API, there's a lot of code that goes into going through and making sure the data is the right format and type that we expect to be able to use it in our application. I'll talk through all of that as we begin coding it, but that's just a few of the reasons why you might want to be using this framework. So getting started, we'll open up a text editor and we'll create a main.py file. This is where our fast API application will be built. As with any project, we have a few dependencies, so I will copy those over. All this code is in the description, so feel free to go down there and grab it if you don't want to type along with me. And then we'll add a few requirements to requirements.txt. So fast API and Uvicorn. We'll save that file and go back to main.py. To begin creating our application, we will say app is equal to capital F fast API. And this is just creating our application for us. At this point, we need to create our endpoints for our API. So how this works is we will have a decorated app. We will use a method that we want to accept at this endpoint. So let's just say get, and now we pass in the route into the parentheses. So if we want this to be our home page of our application, we can just use a slash. Under this, it works very similar to how maybe a Flask application would. So we'll put a function, def, we'll name our function. So let's say something like home, parentheses, and a colon. Next, we'll put our logic into this function. So at our home page, let's just say that when the user goes to it, we just want to return a JSON response. What we can do is we will say return curly brackets. We'll say something like data and hello world. Now within your command prompt or your terminal, if you want to create a virtual environment, now would be the time to do so. I will just do this on my local machine. So what we'll say is pip3 install read our requirements.txt. And what this will do is just install everything in our requirements file. So we'll do that and all mine are already satisfied. Once we have our dependencies, we will use one of them, this one, uvicorn. So we'll say, uvicorn main colon app and if we want to hot reload so this will reload our server whenever we make changes we can use dash dash reload if that command doesn't work for you like it doesn't for me we will instead say python dash m and then we'll do the same thing so main app reload and this should work all right so now you see that we're given a local endpoint we will copy this this is what it looks like i will zoom in so we can see it and we already have a response from our API using this simple line of code. Just to show you how quick the documentation is, we can put slash docs with a pound symbol. Once we visit this, you see that we already have our documentation made for us. It's very zoomed in because I zoomed in from the previous page, but we already have our docs set up for our endpoints as we go. It's pretty quick to return information back to the user whenever they visit an endpoint using a simple function like this one. Now I want to show you how we can take information from the user, use it in our logic, and then return different things back to the user depending on what they send us. To create another route, we'll say app.get, and in a route, let's put a endpoint, so we'll say slash search, and now let's define a variable that the user can send to us. So we'll say search item. Now we'll, we'll go down and create a new function. We'll call it search. And inside this function, what we need to do in something specific to fast API is we'll say item, we'll put a colon, and then we will define a type. So if we're expecting our item to be of string type, 
we will say string. And what this is saying is that when this user sends a get request to this endpoint slash some string, then we'll pull that string and we'll assume it's a string and we'll perform some logic on it here. You could imagine that we were searching against the database for entries of this string, but for this example, we'll just return something simple. So we'll say return, we'll put data, and then we'll just return item. I will pull this over, so slash search, and we'll just use my name here. So as you see, we get the string back in a response that we're defining here by item. Perfect. So that's one way that we can receive information from the user and do something with it. We're not doing a lot here, but you could imagine that we were searching that database like I was talking about. So finally, let's create one more endpoint. We'll say app, and this time let's use a different method. We'll use post. And what that is saying is that we're expecting the user to send us a post request to this endpoint. And with this, what we'll need to do is whatever body we're expecting, we will need to define the types of that post body in our application. This will speed up our response time and also make it so we don't have to worry about dealing with all the different types of data and making sure that our data is clean to be used. How this works is we will need to go above our application and say class and what this will inherit from is our base model. Our item class will have a few different attributes to it. So let's make those now. We'll say name and here is where we define the type of our payload body. So Let's say that we're expecting a name that will be a string type, a description, which we'll use this import here of union. So union, square brackets, of a string, and we'll accept none type as well. And when we do this, we will want to make a default. So none. To explain this here, with FastAPI, we do have to set a type. However, if the user doesn't send this information, we don't want our application to error. And if they don't send information, that is none type. But if they do send it, then it's string. So union is just allowing us to accept both. The default means that if we don't get it in the payload, then it'll just go to the default to this type, which is accepted. So no errors will be produced. Next, we'll say price and we'll just put a flow. Finally, we'll do one more. We will just say something like tax and copy this from this line here. Perfect. So now that we have our class set up, Let's create this endpoint. We'll say items. We'll create a function. We'll say something like create item. And what we'll put here is item. Then we'll refer to the class of item. Finally, we can just say return item. Now that we have this all set up, I just want to show you how we can hit this endpoint. In this examples, I will create a new file and send request.py. We will send a request. We'll do that by saying request dot post and we'll create a payload this payload needs to match the same stuff that we're accepting here so i will copy this and paste it here and i'll go through and make this a valid api very quickly once we have that what we'll do is i will just send this to a local endpoint and now we will post to our url with our payload Finally, we will say something like print response.json. Examples send request.py. And we should get back our payload as a response, which we do. And that's a very simple demonstration of Fast API. One final thing I want to show you is if we wanted to get this hosted very quickly, we can use a service called Wayscript. How simple this is, is we can create something called a layer within Wayscript. We'll say fast API demo. And if you want to create a Wayscript account and clone this, so it's already hosted for you as well, the link for that will be in the description. So what we can do is I will just pull these files into this file manager. Then we'll let those load for just a second. Deploying is very simple. We'll just click on this trigger, deploy, and our commander run. I will post this in the description as well. Will be this. Then we'll match port 880 and we'll click on test. And it's as simple as that to get this deployed on Wayscript. You see it started running and we can visit this endpoint and you see our response. So very simple to get it deployed.
I hope that shows you some of the information about Fast API. And as always, if you have any questions, please let us know and we'll be happy to help. Until next time.